Summer of Wrestling continues as I am happy to bring with me once again the current dual Team Indie DQ predictions champion for both AEW New Japan Pro Wrestling, Good Brother Chris, as we bring to you this first ever simple double featurette where we are going to discuss, break down, and predict the Super J Cup and King of the Ring. Hello, everybody. Well, I'm just a simple man, going in neutral, as you can see. And my name is Noah Foster, and welcome to this first ever simple double feature where we will be discussing both the Super J Cup and the King of the Ring tournament. Before all that, allow me to introduce you to my guest. Great to see him again. I know he's been busy with live work in the AEW Nation. Hashtag give AEW a chance. See you soon, Cindy. First off, he's entertaining. He is simple like me. He is the man, current dual champion of both New Japan Pro Wrestling and AEW predictions on Team NDDQ. It is, of course, the good brother, the one and only, Christopher Willis. How are you, sir? And I love that belt. Oh, oh, <laughs> I'm great. No, I'm great. Oh, man, I, 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 I'm surprised I won that G1 Climax tournament. I'm really surprised. Holiday put up a great fight. Noah, you put up a great fight as well. When it comes to Chris Cass, you know, I heard last year he won it, but he was first place and he went to last place. Sorry, Cass. And Sydney, you had some great picks, but too many draws. But the only draw you can only get is drawing yourself a title that you're never going to win. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah. Hey, but you're the champ. Brag about it while you can. I'll blame you. I'm uh, still waiting on my first chance at Team Indy DQ, and I know there's plenty of opportunities, including this one. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it. So for those of you who don't know, we're going to first discuss represent present for Wrestling and Joseph Funder Liger, who is on his retirement tour. This is the Super J Cup, a 16-man tournament celebrating junior heavyweights, men without limits, men that break boundaries, and so much action possible here from Ariel, the technical, Lucha Libre, etc. And this is right now the seventh Super J Cup. This has not been presented since 2016, where our last winner was, in the finals, Kushida. Facing against, of course, one of my guys, in Suzuki Goon, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, to a near 20 minute bout, beat him via submission. So, with that, let's just go ahead and look right into our bracket here. And we have quite a dynamic cast of representatives from New Japan Pro Wrestling, CMLL, and quite some surprises too. So, let's see here. Good night, Chris. I want to start with you. The, I know that you and Cindy are personally going to see the first night, I believe, of this live. Second night. Like, second night in San Francisco. Still, lucky. Who are you most excited to see right now in this Super J Cup? Man, I, uh, man, if I had to say one person I'm really excited, but it sucks that he's only wrestling for night one in the tournament, but I just have a feeling he's going to lose to this, lose to this wrestler. I got to say the Amazing Red. I remember back in the days of the NWA TNA era, TNA Wrestling, and now Impact Wrestling. It, uh, amazing Red, to me, was one of my favorite wrestlers, like a cruiserweight. Like, he, everybody talked about him being, like, the next Rey Mysterio. You know, he was the inventor. He was the originator of the Code Red. You know, Rey Mysterio kind of gave him that honor to use that 619, what he used to call the move, the 718. You know, Amazing Red right. has been wrestling. And now we see so many others use it with the uh, Tiger Faint kick for Io Shirai, for example. And then we see... Uh, okay, I, I, I kind of got your idea there, keeping it uh, simple. Basically, yeah, I mean, think about this. There's so many moves that Rey Mysterio and others use. I mean, Io Shirai uses Rey Mysterio 619. That's officially called the Tiger Faint kick. We have Mia Yin using Cold Blue. Scarlett Boudot using Cold Red. Amazing Red has been an amazing influence on so many people today in the industry. And I can't believe that this man got him basically, or pushed him per se, to do this. We are going to get a main event on night one of Will Ospreay versus Amazing Red. That is going to be hugely dynamic. With that, why don't we just go ahead and talk about um, the opening matches? Because I could say I'm excited for just one of these people, but you know me. I believe hashtag two if all that matters. Cruiserweights, junior heavyweights are my bread and butter. These are the men I look forward to seeing the most. That's why I love seeing best super juniors every year, and that's why I love predicting it. And uh, several of these opening matches are rematches from best of super juniors. So let's go ahead and get right into them. So let's go ahead and first talk about one of the coaches, since there's now two in New Japan Pro Wrestling. 
uh, Taguchi, who had an amazing run in the Best Super Juniors, versus a man that's had mixed fortunes lately, but I saw him live at Raynard Summer Supercard, go down to some shady tactics, almost like Silas Young's been influencing him, Jonathan Gresham, the octopus. This is going to be a match of two very unorthodox technical wrestlers. You don't know what to really expect from Taguchi, because I still don't understand his place in time. And Jonathan Gresham helps train the future of Ring of Honor at the Ring of Honor Dojo. He's also been in tabs, of course, with Jonathan Gresham. Both these men are former participants in the best of the Super Juniors as well. But they were in different blocks. They did not face each other in best Super Juniors. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens here. But with that being said, I'm going to go, and I'm going to talk about this later because I've got a reason for this. I am actually going to go right now with Taguchi for the win right here. So, good brother Chris, what is your thoughts on this match and your winner? I, uh, th- I, when I looked at the uh, bracket for that, for this match with Gresham and Tadu- uh, Taguchi, uh, I botched it. I'm not, people, I'm not good with Japanese okay. names, so bear with it's me. Okay. Holiday okay. got a lot better. Um, I'm going to go with Taguchi on this one because, I'm, speaking of him, I'm about to meet him on Saturday for the beat and greet. Yeah, learn his play, so that way you could use them when you go into plays and, like, sports and stuff like that. He is a coach yeah, after Jonathan all. Jonathan Gresham is going to put up a fight, but I, I just have a strong feeling uh, Taguchi is going to uh, win. I think he's going to advance. I'm going to go with Taguchi. Okay. Yeah, and, I, and like I said, Jonathan Gresham representing Real Honor, I feel like right now he's next likely to feud with, uh, based on his recent actions, with uh, Jay Lethal, and I feel like he's going to let his, um, basically, frustration get the better of him, and that's going to be his downfall. So that's why I went with Taguchi on this. Let's go ahead and move to the other side of the bracket, where we have one of our representatives of Rapungi 3K. Ironically, all three men of Rapungi 3K are represented in this, and five members of Chaos. you got to imagine they got the strongest chance of one of them being the winner. <clears throat> we have Rapungi 3K's own show versus the Bone Soldier. Taiji Ishimori. These two men are not strangers to each other, as they did face each other in Best of the Super Juniors. Ishimori beat Sho during that. But, Ish- but uh, Sho is one of those that I feel like is really trying to break out and prove something to himself, I feel like. We saw a lot of that during his reinvented entrance and run in Best Super Juniors, injuries and all. But, of course... Bullet Club, there's a reason he is Bone Soldier, and one of the best Bone Soldiers in recent memory. So I'm going to let you start on this one. Who's your pick to win this match, the Bone Soldier or Rapongi 3K? Um, I felt like Sho had a great performance during the Super Junior uh, Cup tournament. Yeah. But I felt like he should have got 10 points close to 12. I thought he was going to be one of the favorites. But he kept losing and losing, but he was really great, hands down. He got 10 I felt, I felt okay. bad for one match when he lost by a count out by, um, I forgot his name from Suzuki Goon. I forgot his name. He always drinks the alcohol. Huh? Calamaro, yep. Yes, him. I, I felt bad for Shaw. I'm like, oh, that messed up his chances. He's a heel master for a reason. And uh, you got Bone Soldier, who is uh, one half of the uh, IWGP Junior Tag Team Champions with uh, El Esperado. El Fantasmo. El Fantasmo. Oh, sorry. Ooh. I got you covered. Watch. I'm watching names today. I'm sorry, people. <laughs> um, I just have a feeling. I think I'm going to go with Show on this one. Oh. All right. I, I have the feeling Show is going to win round one. Interesting. So a bit of a redemption match. Yes. Well, considering the match that we're going to talk about soon, that's going to be a main event for uh, the first night of action, MA from Seattle, I am kind of torn on this myself. Because you're right, it would be a nice redemption match for Show to win this. But I honestly feel like Taiji Isamori is going to make it past round one. So Taiji is my pick for this first round. And I feel like it's going to come down later on to some sort of chaos, bullet club, confrontation almost. But I'll talk more about that later. All right. Well, I know Cindy's extremely happy about this one, and I feel like a lot of people are already counting out his opponent. Clark Connors versus TJP. TJ Perkins. Ever since he left the other place, he's been doing his own thing now on the independent scene. He works with Impact Wrestling, and Rock Romero has even said that TJP... He's one of those with a lot of experience. He's done quite well, but he's made some mistakes as well. But you know what? He's going against this uh, young lion. He thinks he needs a little more time in the New Japan ring, but he even thinks TJP is the favorite in this match. Clark Connors, 
he's been working with, you know, the Iron Man lines of Renderita and Shoto Umino, and he's making his way, but he still has much growth to do. With that, I mean, this is pretty simple. I'm personally going with TJP on this. Good about Chris? What's your thoughts on this match? You know, I was pretty surprised during the King of Indies back in July when TJP was eliminated in the first round against Jonathan Gresham, I believe. Hopefully I'm correct. Yeah, I'm correct. Yes, that yeah. happened. Um, and Sydney G, oh man, she she marked out for TJP hands down. Right. She, yeah, besides she, the Twitter the Twitter reaction, yeah. And she yeah. my folks, our lovely indie queen Sydney G, shout out to her. She has participated in this as well. And again, these guys are gonna go see the second night. Her prediction so far pretty much been Taguchi and Ishimori. And you can guess what she picked for this, but I think we all know she also picked TJP. So I'm, yes, I'm, I'm actually going with TJP as well, so I feel like it's one of the easier matches to call, actually. Not that I'm counting out Clark Connors. Not that I don't think he's going to deliver a good fight. I just think he needs a little more development. I mean, Renda Rita has had the most experience this year from the Young Lions, in my opinion, competing in best of super juniors. And even if he was in this, I still feel like his opponent would go over. I just feel like Young Lions are that. They are developed talent that are working their way up the ranks. Yeah. So that's just why I went with TJP. And I expect it to be a very interesting match against his opponent, who could be, and this is going to be extremely interesting because I feel like this is more personal than professional. The newest member of Chaos, Robbie Eagles, the real Robbie Eagles, versus El Fantasmo. These two men are no strangers to each other, as they also faced each other in Best Super Juniors, and El Fantasmo won. But this was Bullet Club Robbie Eagles. Not the real Robbie Eagles in the words of Will Ospreay. Now, keep in mind, like you said, up in Tadmo, one half of the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions, his partner, Taiji Moore, already have him moving on forward. But I also know, coming up at New Japan Pro Wrestling World Quest, which I also will be predicting on, uh, I know that Robbie Eagles and Will Ospreay are going to face the tag champs in a non-title match. With that being said, I actually went with Robbie Eagles for the win here. So I honestly feel like we're going to get a match of Robbie Eagles versus TJP. It's going to be crazy in the second round. Good brother, Chris. What's your thoughts on this match and your winner? When I found out this match was going to be in the first round, I was very disappointed because that should be like a quarterfinals or a semifinal match between those two. Oh, okay. You know, I like ma- I love tournament matches. Like, if you have someone good, good, and great, great, it's like, oh, uh, it's going to be very tough to pick. Yeah. Honestly, I'm going to disagree with you and Sydney's pick. Robbie Eagles, to me, he really impressed me during the uh, Super Cup tournament back in uh, the month of April or May. Right. He's very underrated. But Absolutely. El Fantasmo, he is just phenomenal. He reminds me of a young Will Ospreay, hands down. And I love that match he had with him during the tournament as well. Yeah. And I really love that storytelling. A lot of people look at New Japan, they're not storytellers. I really enjoyed that storytelling when Robbie Eagles and Will Ospreay fought, you know, because Phantasma was starting to lose. He's like, uh-uh, if Will Ospreay's going to try to get this chance, I got to distract him. And I love that storytelling. Like, uh-uh, if you're going to lose, you're going to be tied with me. And I love yeah. that. That was actually one of my favorites in that tournament, hands down. It was one of my favorites during that tournament. I think uh, El Fantasmo is going to take this victory because I know deep down he wants revenge for what Robbie Eagles did, turn his back on Bullet Club. Oh, biggest decision yeah. you made in your life. <laughs> but I, I'm going with El Fantasmo to win this, man. I, I think he needs to advance. I cannot see this man losing the first round. I can't. I just can't see it. Really? All right. Yes. Yeah, and I feel like this is going to be one of the longest opening matches, per se, because these two can go, and again, they have that history. Yeah. So I'm very looking forward to this match. Let's move on to the other side of the bracket and talk about a match of two luchadors that are not strangers to each other based on all their time in Mexico and Rocky Romero's least favorite versus somebody that is very dynamic. We have Caristico versus Bushi. Now, I'm not that familiar with Carisco's work. I know he works a lot in CMLL, for example. But Bushi, we know, is a member of LIJ, and he's all about the originals of New Japan Pro Wrestling and the original Lucha Libre style. And we know Rocker Romero can't stand the guy, period. So this match is very curious to me based on the other side of the bracket that we'll get to shortly. And it's part of that reason that I am actually going to go with Bushi for the win here. So good brother Chris, 
who is your pick for this match? And what is your thoughts on both these people? Um, a lot of people are asking me, saying that the wrestler you just named, that's actually the original Sin Cara, I think. I don't know. But... I know that I know there was like a – you're, you're right. I'm not sure on that. I have to look that no. up. But Maybe. anyway, anyway, I'm so used. I'm so used to. I always do the line because when Bushi has great matches, or he'll just, he'll he'll be the guy who takes the pin. It's like a, oh Bushi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I can't wait to see Bushi live once again in New Japan. I love his I love his creative masses, man. I just want to buy one of his masks in the near future, man. Um. Um, I'm going to go with Bushi because I, I did experience knowing uh, who Abushi, uh, Abushi is. So I'm going to go with Bushi. All right. Yeah, and it looks like Cindy G, she also went with uh, Bushi as well. And, yeah, in case you all missed it, like the records was alluding to, she also did pick Robbie Eagles. So uh, do it against one. We'll see what happens. But let's look at the other half of this bracket block because, again, there's a reason I picked Bushi. Rocky Romero versus... Soberano Jr. Soberano is not a stranger to New Japan Pro Wrestling, and Rocky Romero has been putting in double work, not only as a commentator for New Japan Pro Wrestling during most of the year, pretty much, but also competing in Best Super Juniors and pulling off one of the biggest wins in that tournament against El Fantasmo. Not to mention that pinnacle win against Taguchi, where they're basically going now as co-coaches. Rocky Romero says, and I quote, he doesn't see himself necessarily winning this, he sees himself going past round one. He said it's been hard both working out and being a commentator, always being on tour, etc. But I feel like Rock Romero is one of those to at least go past round one. It's for that reason. And I know Soberano Jr. has had mixed fortunes lately in New Japan Pro Wrestling in his matches. So I'm actually going to go with Rock Romero for the win in this one. And Sumi G also did. Because basically what I'm setting up is the, is the rivalry. I'm setting up Bushi versus Rock Romero in round two. Good back, Chris. Who do you got? I'm going to take Rocky Romero, man. He has the experience. I know he's a busy man behind the scenes with New Japan Pro Wrestling being the color commentator with uh, Kevin Kelly. By the way, Rocky Romero is really great as a commentator. He really he is. He's really good. But I do, I do miss uh, Cedric. Uh, not Cedric. I was, oh, I messed up the name. Uh, what's that black wrestler's name from Ring of Honor? He's that preacher guy. I forgot his name. Uh, uh, Preach Coleman. Preach Coleman. Preach Coleman. Preach Coleman. He was really great during that tournament. I missed him. I was like, no, don't go away. But anyway, um, Rocky, um, I'm going to go with Rocky Romero, man. He was so insane. Yeah, I'm going to go with Rocky Romero on this one. Yeah, and we're on uh, agreement there. Not that we're discounting the work that uh, Sobrano Juno puts in, for example, in CMLL. I wonder when Kenny King goes down there. Is he and uh, that guy, excuse me, it's hard to forget these names. Wow, go after each other. All right, so let's see here. We got two matches left. Let's go ahead and look at, this is going to be interesting, Yo, who's going to flex the pecs, no doubt. See what story actually gets out of that. Versus the former IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion, Dragon Lee. Now, this match is going to be very interesting because Yo and Dragon Lee were in separate blocks of Best Super Juniors. They have not faced each other one-on-one. -on -one. This is their first one-on-one -on -one encounter. Yo, actually, with one of the better scores, though, in the Best Super Juniors with uh, 12 points. Dragon Lee, though, outmatching him, though, with 14. Both of these men can go the distance. Yo is going in this, though, differently, I feel like, than Sho. Kind of like the mindsets they had separate from each other during Best of Super Juniors. So, I'm not sure, actually, on this one. This one can really go either way. So, oh, man, this is tough for me. I, I got... I got show no, I got uh who do I who do I I see I'm already confused. Yeah, Bone Soldier. Yeah, I got I got Ishimori going over. Uh you know what? Because I wanna think that one member of Punky 3K can make it past round one. Besides the the coach, I mean. I'm gonna go Nah, I can't go against the champ. He was a champ for a reason. I mean, his biggest loss was against Will Ospreay. And I wouldn't be surprised to see these two meet up. Am I predicting that? Yeah, you'll see. But I'm actually going to go with Dragon Lee on this one. Good brother, Chris. Who do you got? I was very disappointed that Sho got a lot more points than uh, – I said, yo, got more points than Sho. Uh, with Sho. Oh, my God. I, I, I just don't – I'm not a big fan of Yo. I don't know. Some, something about Yo, man, he just, he just kind of creeps me out when he does with the pecs. I'm like, yo, I'm down. <laughs> Calm down with the pecs, bro. Calm down. 
I always joke with that with Sydney sometimes. I don't like their theme song. I know Sydney's going to be like sipping her tea when I say that. Um, shout, shout out to this, to Sydney. Um, I just have a feeling Dragon Lee is going to advance. I know it's going to be a great match, a good fifteen minute match between those guys. You know, but Dragon Lee's going to take this, man. Yeah, I feel like we're all in agreement there. Again, he was a former IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. And, and, he is strong- still, and he is still the 2009, well, 2018 and 2019 King of Indies. Bless to y'all's dismay, I can see. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he had one of the strongest performances, too, in Best Three Juniors at 14 points. No doubt we're going to see him next year. Which yeah. brings us to our last opening match. The one that I knew we had to talk about last. This, I feel like people are going to be like, oh, it's an obvious call. But you cannot count out this guy. Will Ospreay is the reason we're seeing this match. A dream match. Will Ospreay versus Amazing Red. Good brother, Chris. Take it away. Your thoughts on this match and your winner. Man, this breaks my heart, man. (laughs) Oh, my God. When when I heard Amazing Red was in this in this tournament, he announced his retirement around WrestleMania weekend. Exactly. He was also the CZW Tag Team Champions with uh with Anthony Gangone, who was also the um, House of Glory Heavyweight of Champion course. as well. Because yeah. you know Amazing Red is uh, the owner of House of Glory. Correct. Training students. I'm a, I'm a, I'm still a huge fan of Amazing Red. He just came from adversity, from injuries. Hell, he was a part. He was hell. He was supposed to be a part of that cruiserweight classic three years ago, but he got hurt. I know everybody say he's injured prone, but when he comes back, he just brings the best. And trust me, I'm a huge fan of Amazing Red. I wish he was a part of that meet and greet in San Francisco, but he was not a part of the listing. So, Cal, you lucky. <laughs> so, like I, I told you earlier, man, before we did the recording, So Cal gets it good. Uh, cool. I, I, I believe you. Not gets the shaft, but anyway. <laughs> this is a dream match. This is going to be the main event, Lucky Bastards for Washington. Ugh, y'all lucky oh. y'all getting this. <laughs> uh, man, I, uh, man, just it, it hurts me to say it, but I respect this wrestler as well because he is one of the MVPs of this year for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Amazing Red, you're always going to be a fan of my heart. But I gotta go with Will Osprey. I gotta go with Will Osprey. Begrudgingly, I have to agree with you. Will Osprey is just on a whole nother level uh, this year. And it hurts, no way. It hurts. Uh, and this is a man, too, that came back from a debilitating injury. That said, he will fight until he can't fight no more. He wants to put New Japan Wrestling and Junior Heavyweights on the map. He wants Junior Heavyweights to main event the freaking Tokyo Dome. And I believe that he can pull this off. He's the current IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. And he won the freaking Best of Super Juniors against who Dave Meltzer's call one of the top matches of the year against Shingo Takagi. Uh, well, I was... on a whole nother level. And he even went through the G1 despite not winning it. He went through that madness. That's saying a lot. And he did pretty darn well, I find, his debut, too. Especially against the likes of surviving Lance Archer, despite not winning that. That match was insane. <sighs> opening day. But I'm sorry, there's no doubt in my mind, I cannot go against the aerial assassin, Will Ospreay, despite his music being copyrighted. And yeah, Cindy I'm very disappointed about that. Yeah. And Cindy also said Will Ospreay as well. So there's our top eight. And I feel like, honestly, this could be the longest opening match of the freaking Super J Cup. And I cannot wait to see this. Washington, you are lucky. <laughs> Man. Well, let's go ahead and move into our semifinals. We're down to eight, man. Let's break it down to four because our next night will be semifinals action. So let's see what we got here. We'll start with you on the left hand side. You got Osprey versus Show, and you have TJP versus ELP. I'm sure that's not coincidental. So, <laughs> so, let's see here. You got Osprey vs. Show, TJP vs. ELP. So, throws up the tongue. Yeah, I really do. Who, who do you see being the top two out of those matches? Well, the quarter, well actually, you, you did say semis, but it's really the quarterfinals. Uh, yeah. I have Will Osprey beating Show, you know, Chaos versus Chaos. 
Now, when it comes to TJP versus El Fantasma, yeah. oh, I, I think Sydney will hate me for this. I know the T is coming. I got to go with El Fantasma on this one. Sorry, Sydney oh. J, nothing personal. 205 Live matters still, but I got to go with the, the – I got to go with him, man. I got to go with El, El Fantasma. You have a Best of Super Juniors rematch. You realize that, right? And the last time those two men met, El Fantasma beat Will Ospreay. So that's going to be extremely interesting if that happens. But well, see, You got to think booking strategy. Got to know the true. story. That is true. So let's see here. I have Will Ospreay versus Taiji Zamori and TJP versus Robbie Eagles. Will Ospreay, Taiji Zamori, again, they are not strangers to each other. They did not face each other, though, in uh, Best Super Juniors. I that should be the main know. event in San Francisco. That should be the main event. I agree. Uh, let's see here. I don't think Taiji Zamori has faced Will Ospreay for the uh, junior heavyweight title. He only faced Dragon Lee. So this would be very interesting because if Taiji wins here, that would obviously put him in line for a title shot. But then the other half of my bracket, I got TJP and Robbie Eagles. And again, Robbie Eagles, the real Robbie Eagles, brought in by Will Ospreay. And TJP versus Robbie Eagles, I'm not sure how many times these two have faced each other on Independence, but I'm going to keep it simple and go quick here. I am actually going to say that, ah, crap. Ugh. I don't really think we're going to get Will Ospreay versus Robbie Eagles again. So with that being said, I'm going to go with Taji Samori and Robbie Eagles advance. And we'll see what happens in that match. Yeah, I'm going basically uh, Bullet Club versus Chaos, but in a whole different direction. Because, again, Robbie Eagles, he was pulling a Bullet Club. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of blood in that. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to the other half of our bracket. You got Taguchi and Dragon Lee, two men that participated, of course, in the best of the Super Juniors, but did not face each other one-on-one. And then you have Bushi versus Rocky Romero. That's going to be extremely interesting. But I feel like you're going to call this being a roadblock for somebody. So who is your two out of those two matches? I'm going to go with Dragon Lee beating Taguchi. And I'm going to take... uh, I'm going to go with Bushi to beat Rocky Romero. Sorry, Rocky. Nothing personal. Well, I mean, like I said, Rocky himself says that he hopes to at least get past round one. He sees himself doing that. He doesn't see himself necessarily winning the whole thing. But with that being said, you and I have the identical right-hand side. And I've seen Taguchi and Bushi, you know, mess around with each other, of course. I mean, Bushi faced Taguchi in the freaking Best of Super Juniors, and Taguchi won even after freaking Bushi blinded him. So will we get that rematch? we get a different result? In my opinion, I don't think so. I'm actually going with the same thing as you. I think Dragon Lee and Bushi will advance. I have Taguchi versus uh, Dragon Lee. I have basically both coaches meeting their end here. As much as I would love to see uh, Taguchi and Rocky Romero again, I just don't see that happening, unfortunately. I went with Dragon Lee versus uh, Bushi as well. So we are down to our final four. But before that, of course, let me talk about the Sunny G, what she got here. She got, between Osprey and Ishimori, she got Osprey. Between TJP and Eagles, ooh, that's unique first. She got TJP. Between Taguchi and Dragon Lee, she got Dragon Lee. Between Bushi and Rock Romero, she's got the uh, Bushi. So her final four are Osprey, TJP, Lee, and Bushi on those sides, respectively. But before all that, let's go ahead and talk about our top four. So, again, you set up a best Super Juniors match on one side of your bracket. You got Will Osprey versus ELP. That's going to be nuts. And then we got Dragon Lee versus Bushi. And I really don't know what Bushi thinks of Dragon Lee here because, again, he's a whole different style, but they do share time similar in Mexico. So out of those two matches, your brother Chris, what is your final match proposedly going to be? You know New Japan's going to stick with stories when it comes to tournaments and rivalries. Correct. I, I meant he needs to get this win. Will Ospreay defeats El Fantasma in the in the semis in Los Angeles. Lucky! Oh, sorry. So <laughs> oh, Cal just makes me sad. All right. And Dragon Lee versus Bushi. Oh, Bushi, your time is up. Um, Dragon Lee. <laughs> oh wow! So you're literally making a rematch for the decade because this will also be non-title, but. Again, these two men... Thinking strategy. 
Yes, and you are. strategy. This match, in my opinion, was personally my favorite match from Dominion. I loved this match. If this match happens, oh, man, in Los Angeles, nonetheless. <sighs> Let's see. I got Ty Jason Moore versus Robbie Eagles and Dragon Lee versus Bushi. So I can either go with a dynamic of we get Robbie Eagles versus Dragon Lee a first time ever, because I honestly don't feel like Bushi's going to win here. Sorry, not sorry. And then we got Ty Jason Moore versus Dragon Lee, where these two men are not strangers to each other, because Dragon Lee beat Ty Jason Moore for that title, and even in the rematch. So what is my proposed final, you might ask? Ah, jeez. Again, this is the real Robbie Eagles, but it's hard to go against the Bone Soldier. I personally am going to go with my final match being Taiji Ishimori versus Dragon Lee. But I expect uh, Robbie Eagles to definitely bring out the real Robbie Eagles during this and put more viewership of chaos on the map. I love a new Japan Pro Wrestling comes to the States. One day I got to see one of their shows. Let's see what Cindy said here. Between Osprey and TJP, she finally went against her boy. She went with Osprey. And between Lee and Bushi, we're all in agreement of that match's outcome. We all think Dragon Lee. So we have the following between uh, Cindy. She has Osprey versus Lee. I have Taiji versus Dragon Lee. And you have Osprey versus Lee. So since you two have the same final proposed outcome, let's see what you think is going to be the overall winner. So goodbye, Chris. In your opinion, who will be the overall winner of Super J Cup 2019? Good thing you brought this up. I brought this to your, your attention early before we started this recording. Yep. Now, you see, I am the reigning and defending. This is heavy. <laughs> Team MDDQ, AEW, and New Japan champion All right. right now. Yes. Now, usually for no DQ, we always go with the general's order. Yeah. Now, we do have AEW's preview and predictions pretty soon. All out. Yes. Now, this I'm going to call the simple man's order. Huh. Now, this is just for fun. The title is not on the line. It's right. not. Sorry, precious. <laughs> precious. I'm going to make this a little offer just for me only. My pick in the finals is going to be Dragon Lee. Now, if Dragon, yes, Dragon Lee is my pick to win this tournament. Wow. Now, if I lose this tournament, if Dragon Lee is not the winner at all in this tournament, if he gets eliminated in the first quarter or semi or even a final, yeah. this is a simple man's order, and I want this guaranteed by you, sir. When we do the preview and predictions for All Out, AEW's pay-per-view, yes. If Dragon Lee doesn't win, now usually our scores is 0-0 zero, zero when we start the predictions. Yes. If I lose, I have to take one negative point to start off. Damn! Yes. And, I'm going to do this, and only I have a choice to pick from the participants for the preview and predictions. I must give them one point. So I can pick anybody in this. It could be you. It could be Cass. It could be Sydney. It could be James, or it can be Holiday. I will be making that announcement soon, later this week, sometime next week. It's more of an advantage. So, because you know, my, I'm the champion because I have confidence. Now, yeah. if I do win this tournament with Dragon Lee, yeah. I officially get one point to start. So, from that order, do I get this guaranteed? As far as I'm concerned, I love this idea. It is a unique first. We are changing the world of AEW. Let's change the world with Team AEW predictions. First time ever. Virtually, between me and you, it's a guarantee. You have a deal. Because my final is... Taiji Ishimori, and your pick to win, Dragon Lee. And in my opinion, I think Dragon Lee will also be the victor of Super J Cup 2019. There, I said it. Now, let's see what the lovely Cindy G has to say about that. Because guess what? She did not say the same thing. She picked to win the Super J Cup and had another accolade to him, Will Ospreay. So there you go. 
We have two for Dragon Lee and one for Will Ospreay. If none of those outcomes happen, we lose. If one of those outcomes happen, we either are going to have, like you said, that simple stance or a new champion for New Japan Pro Wrestling. We shall see soon enough because this weekend marks Super J Cup 2019. What's that? Another tournament brought to us on the Summer of Wrestling. You think about the prestige, the honor, the overall bearers of this, I guess you say honor, I'm going to be redundant. From Sheamus, to Regal, to Edge, to Angle, to Shamrock, to Barrett, to Triple H, to Owen, to Brett, to Savage, to Harley Race, the late and great, rest in peace, to King Booker. It is. King of the Ring. They have brought King of the Ring back for 2019. Not as a pay-per-view, unfortunately, but as a special along the TV weeks ahead. And they are going to crown the winner of this at their next pay-per-view, Clash of Champions. So with that, we have eight men from Raw and eight men from SmackDown Live competing for this prestigious honor. The question I have, is someone going to roll with this like King Buka did, or this was going to be a major flop? Like Sheamus and Wade Barrett that did nothing with this. Don't now, forget, our, don't forget is, William Regal. Oh, I already, oh, trust me, I never forgot William Regal. All right, William Regal. <laughs> that was fun. Anyway, our participants are as follows. For the Raw side, we have Cesaro, Samoa Joe, Ricochet, Drew McIntyre, Cedric Alexander, Sami Zayn, The Miz, and Baron Corbin. <laughs> and the SmackDown side, we have Kevin Owens. The current 24-7 champion, good God almighty, Elias, at time recording, Ali, Buddy Murphy, oh shit, Chad Gable, Shelton Benjamin, former tag team, former tag team champs, and Apollo Crews and Andrade. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go first talk about our thoughts on this outlook of King of the Ring. And then we're going to break down, like we did before, our picks to win each match win on the next round, win the whole thing, and why. And then I'm also going to share, of course, some picks from our fellow Team ADQ, as well as No DQ leader Aaron Rick. And if you haven't seen his Breaker Challenge video, go see it. He's holding a special contest. We're up to five No DQ shirts to be given away for free. With that being said, good brother, good brother, Chris. 2019, we have King of the Ring back. I'm surprised they don't do a Queen of the Ring, and I'm still waiting for many on Classic 4, but I digress. What is your thoughts on King of the Ring and the way they're doing it? Do you miss it as a pay-per-view format? Are you excited for this? And what are your, some of your favorite King of the Ring memories? You know, when I first heard King of the Ring was coming back for the first time in five years, I was pretty excited. But I wish it was a pay-per-view. You know, we hear, we hear a lot of great King of the Ring pay-per-views like 1993, 1996, 97. Hell, you can think of 2000 when back in the day it used to be a 32-man tournament when Kirk Angle won it. You know, you had Edge winning the King of the Ring. He only won a trophy. And Brock Lesnar was the very last one. That That's the only pay-per-view that I've ever watched King of the Ring. But, like, oh, memorable King of the Ring, like, black, from the blast, from the past, from, like, back in the days. Yeah. Like I said, I watched the King of the Ring back in 2002, the pay-per-view, but not the others. If I had to think of something really memorable, I got to think of that Stone Cold Steve Austin promo. Yeah, because that's when we got Austin 316. One of the most iconic moments in WWE history. But I that, mean, that, to me, it is. I know I don't watch the main roster like Raw and SmackDown. Like, you know what? Let, let me say it like this. Let's say I move to Ohio. And you're my best friend. You're my next-door neighbor. And you said, hey, you want to watch Monday Night Raw and SmackDown? Um, no. You, you, mean, first, you mean like Sheamus and Rusev and Sheamus was like, but no, Rusev was like, oh, we're going to watch Tilla Diva. She was like, no, I'm not watching that. Beep again. Yeah. But, um... I'm actually looking forward to this tournament. I'm actually going to be watching the tournament matches from Raw and SmackDown. Yes, I'm going to do it this year. 
just for the matches only. Not watching three hours of Raw. N- no. Yeah, I know. I only watch two hours. Because I really, care, I really care about King of the Ring because I like a lot of people said King of the Ring was like their big fifth pay per view back in the days. It really yeah. was. I really enjoy King of the Ring. Hands down, I love the turn. Like, the winner of the tournament, you receive a title shot at SummerSlam. Sometimes you get a title shot. Sometimes you don't. At your choosing, sometimes, too. Like, you had, like, the the, the best King of the Rings you could just list. You could think Bret Hart, Owen Hart, Hart. Triple H, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Kirk Angle. You got to go with Edge. You got to go Brock Lesnar. And, yes, the last one, who was the best king? And this was from Sydney's mouth, too. And my best friend, Evan G. Francis. Shout out to him. King Puka. Yes! And Queen Charmelle. And oh honorable, God, and honorable mentions, sure. the late, great Holly Race and the late, great Macho Man, Randy Savage. Woo, yeah, dick it. Very nice. Yeah, there's been a lot of the great King of the Rings, a lot of great moments. A lot of stars came out of this. My biggest concern is they don't do nothing with this. I hope this truly does elevate not only – the King of the Ring idea, prestige, win itself. But whoever wins it, whether heel or face, and trust me, there's a lot of dynamics in this year's tournament, I guess you could really call it. And I have mixed feelings about who I want to win versus who I think's going to win, and I'm going to talk about that more. But the bottom line is this. Make King of the Ring mean something. They're not. I don't expect them to do something as big as King Booker did with his court, the queen kissing people's feet. Uh, but I expect them to actually... Get something from this, make something of it, reinvent their character, and maybe push them to a title shot. Elevate them and make people care about this person or hate them more. I don't know. Do you want people to hate or appreciate? I guess we'll see soon enough. But with that being said, let's just go ahead and talk about it. So, again, they're going to show this over the next few weeks on Raw and SmackDown Live, King of the Ring matches, and it literally starts tomorrow on Monday Night Raw with some of these matches. So, let's go ahead and start with the Raw side. First match. But this is going to be interesting. Cesaro versus Samoa Joe. Now, Samoa Joe has been pretty much claimed as the fall guy. Joe loses. Simple as that. Because it doesn't matter how great of a promo he is. He is an incredible worker. They always set him up to eat the fall. But this is just a regular match. Even if it is King of the Ring. Then you have Cesaro. A guy who I want them to push so damn badly. Because he deserves it. He deserves an opportunity to run, excuse me, with a world championship. He's already been United States champion. He's already going to have the Intercontinental Championship numerous occasions. And he's even won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal back at WrestleMania 30. He was a Paul Heyman guy. Paul Heyman knows talent when he sees it, clearly. So with that being said, I actually went with Cesaro to move on and win this. It was tough for me to think about this because... Samoa Joe is one of those who I want them to push. But again, I'm thinking about, will they do something with this? And can King of the Ring fit with some of these people? Honestly, I don't think King of the Ring can fit with Samoa Joe. Good brother, Chris, who is your pick to win this match, Cesaro or Samoa Joe? Now, this match was very, like, unpredictable, but at the same time, it's predictable. Cesaro has not had the best win-loss record in WWE in 2019 as a one-on-one competitor. Right. Hell, he's been wrestling on main event a lot more. When you team what? up with... He, yeah, he's been wrestling on main event a couple oh. times. Hell, he even teamed up with EC3 last week. And I'm like, wow, the sky has fallen for Cesaro. And I'm, I am I, I respect Cesaro myself as well, man. I, I really do. It, it, just, it just hurts me so much. But I got to go with Samoa Joe for round one. Really? You... <laughs> It's like what Aaron Ripp said. Yes, I did watch his preview and predictions for King of the Ring. Cesaro, to me, is just an enhancement talent. Mm, that's hard. But I understand your stance on that. Yeah. And shout out to everybody who's participated in this. Just for fun. This is not just for our time. It's just for fun. But as far as I'm concerned, if you win this, call yourself king of whatever team you're part of. King of any DQ for all I'm concerned. Because we also did get predictions from the lovely Cindy G, uh, Chris Mace, even Tyler and I had some fun with this. TJS from a no DQ. We know Aaron's doing this because, you know, it's part of work, but also for fun, too. Colin Andrew, he also did one as well. And as much as I'd love to read everybody, I just don't have time. And thank you, Travis, a.k.a. T-Fame. Go check out uh, Cherry vs. Neri. He's the one that first brought the bracket into the no DQ official chat and brought this forward. 
I'm sure others are going to participate as well. Big G, he participated in this. So many people. King of the Ring means a lot to people. So let's just have fun with this, folks. And check out people's brackets or fill out your own, especially in Jerry Slyer's group Armbar. Thank you, uh, Brandon Greatman. But anyway, this is just about me and Kim. You'll see my bragging official blank one at the end. So please join in the fun. With that being said, we got our opening match. Let's go to the next opening round match. Ricochet versus Drew McIntyre. Now, this is going to be very interesting because, to my knowledge, I don't think Ricochet and Drew McIntyre have had a one-on-one -on -one match yet on Monday Night Raw because Drew McIntyre has been feuding with Cedric Alexander. And I'll admit, their last match on Monday Night Raw, pretty damn impressive. Maybe it is a new era. I can only pray. But, anyway... Ricochet versus Drew McIntyre. Ricochet is calling himself a superhero already, okay? You've got to imagine he's a prime candidate for King of the Ring. Now, we haven't had a face, though, as Cindy put it, since Shamrock. But Drew McIntyre, I'm so sick and tired of him being Shane's bitch. This guy should have already been in the world title picture and holding a world title. King McIntyre has a nice ring to it, but again, that'd be like a Dark Lord type thing. And based on my bracket, with that being said, I'm also going off past history kind of too. And I feel like they're going to push this guy, especially since he's done with the U.S. title picture. My pick for this was Ricochet. Good brother, Chris. What's your pick for this match and thoughts on this? Um, before I go with my pick, um, I actually made an error. When um, Jack the Jobber from Cultaholic, I know it's not going to be uploaded for uh, no DQ, um, Cultaholic said the last babyface to win King of the Ring was actually Edge. Yes, that shocked me, but when he won, yes, when he won King of the Ring, he slowly turned face. Oh. Out of the blue, yes. Yeah, I know. I thought it was wrong, but I was like, oh, okay, so he did. Because he did make fun of Billy Gunn the next night on Monday Night Raw back in 2001. So I'm like, oh, so Edge became... I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I know. I thought when, he, when I heard that, I'm like, uh, I, I doubt it. But I looked on Wikipedia, I'm like, oh, he did turn face. So actually, Edge was the last one, but I I thought it was right on Shamrock, but it was Edge, yeah, so know. anyway, so I'm going to clear that up, I told Sydney that, she was even shocked, um, thank you for that, my pick for Ricochet versus Drew McIntyre, yep, yep, I just feel so bad for Drew McIntyre this year, like, this guy could be undisputed champion right now, he should be one of the top heels right now in the game, and he's not even in that category, Dude. he's not one pay-per-views in 2019. At all. Not at all. I can't believe that. He should be spread for the Undisputed Championship. He's not. Nope. Ricochet, I know Paul Hammond is very high on Ricochet on Monday Night Raw. Absolutely. Ricochet really do needs to redeem himself since he lost his United States title, lost at SummerSlam. I just have a feeling that Ricochet is going to pull out the victory victory with a schoolboy. Yes, I might be copying Aaron Ripp's little picks and whatnot, but he does make a very good point. Well, I mean, a lot of these opening matches, they kind of feel a little obvious when you think about the way that WWE has really used these guys. And again, my biggest hope is for them to build a new star, but I feel like this is just filler based on all the other tournaments. Like you said, we had the G1, now we got the Super J Cup. August has been the month of wrestling tournaments. Simple as that. But I'm very curious to see how this all plays out come Clash of Champions, where every title is on the line. So expect at least 11 matches, maybe 12 for the 24-7 title, but we'll talk about that later. All right, next match. I'm going to let you kick off this one, because this one's very interesting to me. The guy that's been like nothing but a mouthpiece for Vince, even though he said AEW and probably been thrashed since then, versus a guy that we're both very really high on, that we felt like I said, a mixed fortunes, on Monday Night Raw, but has definitely been able to showcase what he's capable of lately in the feud with Drew McIntyre. Cedric Alexander versus Sami Zayn. Good Brad Chris, your thoughts on this match and your winner. <sighs> At least Cedric Alexander's getting TV time. Yes, the great. He's, he's been cold, warm, cold, warm. Yes, I think it's Sami Zayn, I just feel so bad for this man. He came back after WrestleMania. He's only won, like, one one-on-one -on -one match this year was against Braun Strowman for a qualifier to get in. To and that was with help during a gimmick stipulation, but uh, a win's a win in the books. You know, yeah. but that's the last one-on-one -on -one victory Sami Zayn has ever had. Correct. Now, I know when we go through these brocatologies, I will bring it up later, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I just... 
I like Monday night's raw heavyweight division sucks. It like for the heavyweight for the undisputed title. It yeah, just, exactly. yeah I agree. I it just too. it's just no great heel star power. This might sound crazy a little bit. And when I watch Aaron Riff's picks, I kind of almost had the same thing, but I'm making a decision to be a reversal. I'm actually going to pick Sami Zayn to be Cedric Alexander. What? <laughs> wow. So you're expecting to see NXT Sami Zayn basically against Cedric Alexander 205 Live. You're expecting to see a really great classic, not some sort of weak gimmick where Sami comes out and Cedric just crashes him. Because that's what I was going with. Because you're right, Sami Zayn's been basically buried. Ever since his feud in 2016 ended with KO, he's done nothing memorable since. He still has yet to win singles gold on Freaking Monday Night Raw. He hasn't even gone for 24-7 title, ironically. But with that being said, I'm actually against you. I went with Cedric Alexander. But if Cedric and Sammy can pull up a NXT-level classic, that is how you revitalize Sami Zayn. I almost want to change my pick, but I'm not going to. But bold, man. Very, very bold. So you're hoping that this could be the first stepping stone to rebuilding Sami Zayn while protecting Sir Alexander. Yes. Okay. Well, oh, gee. This one's going to be weird. The Miz, Babyface Miz, I might add, versus, oh my gosh, put SpongeBob cue cards if, if I was going to talk about this guy, but I'm not going to. Fuck that. Baron Corbin. Now, Baron Corbin has not been involved in anything since losing the Extreme Rules Anything Goes match. For the since he lost that, he could not have a shot at the title. But then again, uh, we all know that uh, Brock Lesnar beat Sammy that night and then Seth brought back, so that resets the stipulation. But based on what I've seen on Raw, they might be going in the direction of Seth Rollins versus Braun Strowman for the Universal title, face versus face. Honestly, though, if someone's going to turn heel, it's got to be Seth Rollins. I feel like it's overdue. Braun as heel didn't work. We're still going to cheer the guy. I think we will still receive Braun as a better baby face than Seth Rollins. That's just my opinion. But looking at this match, looking at King of the Ring, Looking at the way it could be portrayed, I lit with Baron Corbin. So who's your pick on this match? Keep in mind, your pick's going to face Sami Zayn, theoretically. Well, I don't, I don't care too much about Baron Corbin. I know he is a great heel, but Babyface Miss is really horrible. He has not been the same since he lost to Shane McMahon. Hmm. Yeah, Babyface Miz is really dumb. I don't like it at all, whatsoever. <laughs> Baron Corbin hasn't been seen since, actually, the next night after Money in the Bank when he lost that 10-man battle raw, and we didn't see Corbin since. Correct. But I don't watch Monday Night Raw, but I keep tabs on the results. So I mean, Arabic live recaps up out tremendously. Thank you, sir. Good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great great uh, listen at work, let me tell you. Anyway, yeah. continue. Um, I just have a feeling that The Miz is going to beat Baron Corbin out of the blue. I'm going to go The Miz. Huh. The Miz. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. You know what? If it means Miz goes heel if he becomes king of the ring, I might actually be okay with that. But that takes care of the Raw opening side. Let's go and look at the SmackDown opening side. And I got to be honest with you, I am much more excited with the SmackDown Live opening matches, two in particular. Let's go ahead and first talk about this one, though. Kevin Owens versus bang, the current 24-7 champion at time of recording, Elias. So Elias is one of Shane's lackeys. And the last thing Elias did was he was special enforcer and counted the quickest three count on KO for him to lose against Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe actually got a victory in a match. I'll be damned. But this is Elias versus Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is on this babyface run. He is basically being described by some as Stone Cold, KO Punk. Very funny. Go follow him at NoDQ Vice. In this match, though, I feel like he's going to get his comeuppance. I feel like Kevin Owens is going to advance here. What is your thoughts on this match and your winner? Um, I just have it. Kevin Owens is going to win. I think Shane McMahon is going to be like, I'll let you win some matches, but I'll show up when you're 
getting too damn good in the tournament. So I'm going to go with KO on this one. So. Yeah, and again, I feel like KO versus Shane is not done yet. They've got to be bound for another match. I hope it doesn't have that class of champion. So. Focus on just the championships. How about you make a preview actually matter about its name? But I digress. Even though this isn't a championship, this is an honor, but hey, maybe it'll lead to a championship opportunity. Stupid wordplay. Oh, this one has to be good. And by the way, I'm already excited for this Tuesday because we're getting Buddy Murphy's Daniel Bryan. That should be sick. But this right here is a 205 Live Feud Reborn that's going to be a classic. Mustafa Ali, yes I call him that, versus Buddy Murphy. Can I tell you right now how excited I am for this match? They faced each other, what, three or four times in 205 Live, and one of their top matches probably in 205 Live was that freaking no DQ match where Mustafa Ali won in the end. Buddy Murphy, one of the ch- ra- better champions of July, July the 3rd, 2018. That and, no right. and the only match that mattered to me personally at Australia Super Showdown was Buddy Murphy versus Sir Alexander, and that only went for 10 minutes. That was insane itself, and that's when he won the Cruiserweight title. Now we got Buddy Murphy coming off what is probably one of WWE's best main roster matches to date against Roman Reigns. I can't believe I just said that. That was freaking amazing how they did that. And now he's facing Daniel Bryan. They're finally giving Buddy Murphy the freaking showcase he deserves. I really hope it's just not one and done, show off, burn out once this who-done storyline's over. And this match, I feel like, can preserve him more. But with that being said, Mustafa Ali's already been getting the push. He was only basically discharged after getting injured by Randy Orton. Mustafa Ali's been on these promos, and I know Ali's going to deliver one hell of a match. I'm going with his heart. I went with Mustafa Ali on this to advance. What is your thoughts on this match and your winner for this? This is going to be good. These two rest, Mustafa Ali, yes, I said it, um, and Buddy Murphy have awesome chemistry. Dating back during the tournament, during the quarterfinals of the Cruiserweight uh, Tournament of 2018, their no disqualification match, their one-on-one match, and their Survivor Series match. That hold on, I gotta do this little plug. I was there, y'all. Sydney G, <laughs> <for> you. <sighs> oh yeah, that was that was one of my favorite matches from that card too, and it was on the main card. But I digress. No, yes, no. it was on oh, the that's... main card. Yes. Anyway, Mustafa Ali, when he first finally debuted on SmackDown, he was on a hot streak. Then he got hurt. Then yeah. he's cutting promos. He's cutting promos. He's cutting promos. That's yeah. the biggest thing you really need to do in the wrestling industry. You need to and learn. To cut promos. He was always a great talker. He yeah. always was. But he's always been hot and cold, warm and cold ever since the summertime. We're still trying to figure out if he's going to get that title shot against Nakamura. Hell, I'm even a little disappointed that Shinsuke Nakamura is not in this tournament. I'm actually yeah. a little disappointed. Yes. Oh. I'm actually a little disappointed about this. But anyway, I just have a feeling that Buddy Murphy is going to advance to the next round in a great match. And plus, I want to bring this up, too. I don't want to see these tournament matches be like, oh, five or seven or eight. No, like no five-minute matches for the tournaments. Give them at least seven or eight minutes each or sometimes ten when it comes to these tournaments. Some of these are of at least ten, if not more. And I think this one definitely takes the cake. And I will say this. SmackDown Live is supposed to be the more wrestling-focused show. So I'm hoping this match especially is treated right, just like yes. they did with Buddy Murphy and Roman. And I'm very curious to watch Buddy Murphy versus Daniel Bryan. Yeah, so my pick to be to advance to the next round is uh, Buddy Murphy. Okay. Let's go ahead and go to our last quarter of the bracket here in opening matches. Well, at least he's finally doing something besides smiling. And Chad Gable, we already know what he's capable of. Former Olympian, I met him live. We see what he can do on 205 Live. But these two are also former tag team champions, I believe. No. Nope. Tag mates. Oh, tag, right. they never only tag, tag team. team. Well, never, they never had the tag they, team. They had, they, they had like one win, and then they got overturned due to the breath. You're like, oh, no, 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 no. Go on the road against yeah. the Usos. Great rivalry. Wow. And then we saw the restart, and that match fell apart. The two out three balls. But anyway, yeah. Chad Gable versus Shelton Benjamin. It's sad to say, I feel like this is one of the more obvious matches to call. Shelton Benjamin, incredible athlete. We know what he's capable of. He used to be the gold standard of WWE. But Chad Gable, all he's doing in backstage at SmackDown Live is running a clipboard. But at least they're using him on 205 Live. And he versus Jack Gallagher probably has had my favorite match so far this year on 205 Live. Yes, I said it. With that being said, I'm going with Chad Gable advances here. What is your thoughts on this and who is your winner? When this match was announced, I was like... This is a great match on paper, 
but these two wrestlers have barely been on TV. Again, why is Shinsuke Nakamura is not in this tournament? For Chad Gable being a part of 205 Live has been incredible with those two matches he had with Jack Gallagher. Hold on, again, another plug. I was there for the first one, y'all! We lucky. Yeah, lucky. I couldn't go to that event due to a knee injury. Um, um, Shelton Benjamin, to me, is... I, I've always been a fan of Shelton Benjamin for so many years. He was very underrated. Like, you, you have him in the locker room, not on SmackDown Live a lot. Correct. Like, he's like, what, 43 years old? And you, you got him with this stupid gimmick, like, he's just looking up in the air. Yeah, you ask him a question, just, and like, he smiles, and then... And why, why did you sign him? This is actually his two-year anniversary being back with WWE. Two years. Wow. Yeah, it's just really sad. But I just have a feeling Chad Gable's going to advance just because. Yeah, not much more to say on this, unfortunately. Again, if this match is treated correctly, this could be a great opening match. Again, I'm really excited more for the SmackDown Live opening side than the Raw side. Just saying. At least for three of the four. But anyway, let's go ahead and talk about this last one because this is weird. Control C, Control V. Oh! oh. Once again, these two are going at each other. It seems to be the only side story coming out of SmackDown Live anymore. Apollo Crews, who's been lately getting matches, ironically, versus Andrade Cien Almas. And I know Selena Vega will not be far behind, despite being Alistair Black's wife. But anyway, this one's going to be interesting, because I feel like it's going to be their best match these two will have together. The other two are just more like, okay, I'm here, storyline, Andrade wins via cheap tactics. But we know Apollo Crews and Andrade, they've already met backstage against each other. There's been story built for this. I feel like this, again, could be their best match. This could possibly main event a SmackDown Live if treated correctly. Andrade Cien Almas is one of the best superstars that SmackDown Live has, delivering constant after constant after constant classic, no matter who he's in the ring with, and has yet nothing to show for it yet. In my opinion, he's one of the prime candidates that I would love to see as King of the Ring. And I'll talk more about that later as we continue. But with that being said, I am going to go with Andrade Cianamas picking up the win in a match to remember. Chris, your thoughts on this and your winner. I know Apollo Crews and Andrade Cianamas, yes, I said it, have been wrestling on SmackDown about maybe three or four occasions. Pretty much. And two of them weren't even matches. They were just beatdowns. Yeah. I felt when this match was announced, I'm like, again, come on now. We've seen these matches before. I got Andrade Cianamas beating Apollo Crews because, actually, I'm going to say this now. No, later, later. Be fair, be fair. He's got interesting thoughts. All right. Well, But um, Andrade needs this win. He needs it. It's going to be him. He's been on a hot streak. He defeated Rey Mysterio not once, but twice. Yep. You know, on Monday Night Raw. So I got Andrade winning this and to advance. I'm glad he didn't do the R growl like Stephanie McMahon. And I'm scared because I know she's got to be due to come back. Ah, jeez. No, we don't need Stephanie McMahon, please. Just just no. All right. Well, you know. All right. Anyway, so we whittled down the field from 16 to 8. Let's go ahead and talk about our semifinal matches. So let's go ahead and talk about the raw side first. So... Your first match is Shamoa Joe versus Ricochet, who had one of the better matches from W. Stomping Grounds for the U.S. title. And in my opinion, it showed Ricochet was still green, but he can hold up with a heavyweight. Again, Shamoa Joe, incredible worker, but he always is the fall guy. So let's see if that mentality sticks with you. Who is your pick to advance to the semifinals? This is our quarterfinals here. Ricochet versus Samoa Joe. Now, no, I did not watch their match at Stomping Grounds, but it was really good. You should check it out. No, I don't watch the B-level pay-per-view, so no. Um, right. But continue. I just have a feeling Samoa Joe is going to be that fall guy. Samoa Joe, to me, is one of the best in the wrestling business. I'm surprised, I'm surprised he's not even WWE World Heavyweight Champion, and I'm surprised I don't watch SmackDown Live anymore because of that last year against that feud with AJ Styles. But SmackDown's been getting a lot better. Not interested. Don't care. Eh, I wouldn't say a lot better, but continue. But yes, I just have a feeling that Ricochet is going to pull out another victory. 
So Ricochet is going to defeat Samoa Joe with a surprise victory. You don't think it's going to be a roll-up, do you? Pretty much. Dang. Well, I mean, he's being Samoa Joe for a roll-up before. It's like the cheapest way Ricochet picks up wins. I hope I don't see that again. But we'll see what happens. As far as my semifinals go, Cesaro versus Ricochet, I can, see, I can watch these two fight all the time. Anytime Cesaro's in the ring, I'm happy. And Ricochet, one of the most dynamic superstars on the current Raw roster. I fought his work since WCPW and Lucha Underground, okay? And then that match with LG. The man can do no wrong. Simple as that. He does great matches. He's just still a little green when it comes to the promo game, which is why I think Vince will always look down at him, sadly. But with that being said... In my semifinals, I also have Ricochet advancing against Cesaro. Because, again, Cesaro, enhancement. Dad, come I'm sick of that shit. More forgive me. All right, let's go ahead and look at our other Raw matches here. Ugh, I hate that I did this. But it's WWE. It's Vince McMahon. You know my other semifinals is Sid Alexander versus Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin is one guy Vince pushes to the moon to always be part of top-tier storylines main events because, in his words, he's a chick magnet. He also loves working with the guy. The guy will do whatever Vince says. Simple as that. But with that being said, Senator Alexander, Baron Corbin, it's a match of big guy versus little guy. They're going to play it like that, in my opinion. Senator Alexander is going to do one hell of a fight, but Baron Corbin is going to move out his three moves of doom, and I feel like this is going to be how you get Baron Corbin Close to going back on TV. I picked Baron Corbin to win with an end of days. And I really hope I'm wrong, actually. Anyway, your other semifinals match is Sami Zayn versus The Miz. So what is your thoughts on this match? Who do you see advancing to face your guy and my guy, technically, Ricochet? Well, Sami Zayn needs victories. He needs to come back up. You know, you got to make Sami Zayn as a credible threat to the mid-card title or to the uh, or the Universal Championship. The Miz, he really doesn't need this king of the ring. He's already established. He has nothing really to prove anymore, really. So I'm going to go Sami Zayn to advance to the semifinals to wrestle Ricochet on Monday Night Raw. Nice. And the thing is, Miz has done literally everything in the business. You're right. The only accolade he doesn't have is king of the ring. So, ironically, he could go for it. But, again, unless he's going to turn heel. He ah, needs to go heel bad. I, yeah, I just don't see him becoming king of the ring unless he goes heel. If he makes it to the finals and turns heel, that would make sense. But I digress. All right, so we got our Raw uh, semifinals uh, set up. Let's go ahead and go to the SmackDown Live side. So, you have Kevin Owens versus Buddy Murphy. A first. Now, I feel like this match has been in the works for a while, ever since Kale uttered Buddy Murphy's name. And Buddy Murphy said, Kevin Owens... Keep my name out of your mouth. Otherwise, I'll see you in the ring. Basically, that's what he said. You got a battle of two heavyweights. And I honestly look forward to this match. But I feel like you're going to also play off the storyline going through with KO and uh, the Omni Shang. So with that being said, who is your pick to win that match in your bracket to move on? Give those two guys 12 minutes. Don't put no commercial breaks on this. Kevin Owens is a beast. Buddy Murphy is a beast himself. But Shane McMahon is still lurking. He's looking. He's like, not now. Not now. To watch the best thing with Alfred Angle on a new $5,000 TV. I still want my TV. I still want it. But (laughs) but but all serious, I got to go with Kevin. I like Birdie. I, I really respect Birdie Murphy. I'm happy he's on SmackDown. He had, I heard he had a great match with Roman. Yes, I, I will check the match out in the near future. You know, maybe. I suggest you do, personally. Yes, I'll, I'll take your word for that. Um, I, I got Kevin Owens to beat Buddy Murphy. Okay. Well, I mean, Kevin Owens is the one that put over the former King of the Rings and put over this uh, tournament. So, I mean, he definitely is probably a prime candidate and maybe with the brackets to win. But with that, my semifinal, my quarterfinal, excuse me, Kevin Owens versus Ali, I feel like this is where storyline picks up. Because, again, I had Kevin Owens going over Elias, one of Shane's cronies. And, again, KO is still in that storyline with Shane. And I honestly feel like they're going to set up KO for Shane again. Lord help us. It's for that reason that I feel like Ali is going to go over KO here. I still think it's going to be a good match. But Ali, he hasn't been able to do anything since injury. This is how you bring Ali up. This is how you bring Ali back. 
for what I'm setting up. So I am going to go with Mustafa Ali going over Kevin Owens. And I feel like Kevin Owens is still going to make sure you respect Ali, but he's going to blame one person for losing. All right. So moving on to our other bracket, you and I have the same exact match for this. This Chad Gable versus Andrade Cien Almas. And, yes, this is going to be good. This is going to be a first. This one can go truly either way. Both these men have the endurance and the capability to deliver at least a 10-minute match. But, again, the wild card in this, Selena Vega. She has been the difference lately in Andrade Cien Almas' matches. She's the reason that Andrade won that last match against Rey Mysterio. And I feel like here, she's going to be the reason Andrade advances. I went with Andrade Cien Almas to advance. What is your thoughts on this match and your winner? You said 10 minutes, add two more minutes to that. 12 tops. Because I'm trying to avoid commercial breaks because you got to remember, this isn't pay-per-view. This is going to be on TV. So we're either going to get... Know, I know, but still. I know. I know. I know. I, I, I know. I know. But Chad, Gable, Chad Gable to me is an awesome, great talent. Why is this man not getting used? Yes, he's going to be used for the tournament, but use him more often, WWE. Use him more often. He is yep. great in the ring. Or hell, just put him on 205 Live permanently. Trust me. My God, the matches he can have. <laughs> oh, anyway. there's so many. I hope but he gets my, through. But my exactly. pick to win the quarterfinals between Chad Gable and Andrade Cien Amis. Yeah. I got to go with the man himself, Andrade Cien Amis, to defeat Chad Gable in maybe 12 minutes. I have to admit that now we're down to our final four. Andrade was one of my top tier picks to take the whole thing. But again, we'll talk about that more. So, yeah, we're down to our final four. So let's go ahead and get right into it. And let's go back to Monday Night Raw. Because again, I feel like I'm just going to do Raw, SmackDown, Raw, SmackDown, Raw, SmackDown. All the way up to Clash of Champions. So, your semifinals match is Ricochet versus Sami Zayn. Uh, first, we have not seen in either NXT or Monday Night Raw. And again, if Sami Zayn is not Vince's mouthpiece and just insulting fans, but wrestling like he did with the heart and dexterity he did in NXT, this can be a real classic. So, I'm curious, what is your thoughts on this match and who you have going to clash the champions? Ricochet or Sami Zayn? Like I said earlier, I did do some changes on my bracket. But, it, you know, it's on the recording now. I know one person did something really weird with their bracket, but it was very smart. Like I said, Monday Night Raw's heels is not incredible for Seth Rollins. Correct. It's not incredible. I want to pick this person, but I just have that bad feeling they're going to drop the ball on it. I'm not going to be the same person with their final two. So my pick to win King of the Rain, I mean, win the semifinals. Outside, yeah. I got to say Ricochet on this one. Ooh. I got to say Ricochet. All right. So your raw side is Ricochet. Well, you already saw what I set up. Because, again, I don't see a lot coming out of this. I see Vince using somebody he wants to put on TV. I also see somebody that's going to go the distance with this and brag about it till the end. But as far as the Raw side goes, I Ricochet versus Baron Corbin is my final Raw match. Ricochet... Again, very green. His weakness is promo, and that could be his downfall. Baron Corbin is a Vince favorite, and no doubt Baron Corbin, Vince wants him to be on the next pay-per-view, Clash of Champions. We think about all the names that weren't on SummerSlam, and people already got mixed reactions to that. But I'm keeping it simple. With that being said, I'm going to get a lot of heat for this, but in Vince logic, it's probably going to be, in a lot of people's agreements, my Raw winner is Baron Corbin. And again, I'm going Vince mentality here. And since this is fun, I'm just praying to God I'm wrong. But with that being said, let's go to the SmackDown side because we only have set up half of this match. So you have Kevin Owens versus Andrade Cien Amas. I have Ali versus Andrade Cien Amas. Oh. 
All three of these men would be perfect candidates, in my opinion, for King of the Ring. Ali being a man of the people, the heart, saying, don't give up. I fight for you. He would be like the good king, which, again, we haven't had in years. Kevin Owens, he respects King of the Ring. He talks about the accolades of the former kings. And what a freaking rub in the face of Shane McMahon it would be that while Shane calls himself best in the world, maybe KO can force Greg Hamilton to say, call me King of the Ring. But then you have to try to see who could use this push so badly. And I would love to see his Aztec queen, Steve in the Vega. But again, I'm not even declaring my official win for King of the Ring yet. I'm just talking about the potential with all these men. With that being said, my finals is Ali versus Andrade Cien Amas. A match that is going to be one for the books. But with that being said, I feel like this is where we hoped Andrade Cien Amas, because I already got a heel, and I feel like they're not going to do a heel versus heel. I went with Mustafa Ali to be the SmackDown Live winner. Good brother, Chris. You got KO versus Andrade Cien Amas. And remember, your raw side is Ricochet right now. So who is your winner for SmackDown Live? And what is your final setup? This is another first time ever match between Kevin Owens versus Andrade, Andrade Cien Amas. Correct. That's when Shane McMahon is finally going to strike and interfere. Oh. He's going to have his goons beat up Kevin Owens. Because that promo Kevin Owens cut on Tuesday, I heard about it but didn't watch it, that right. he talked about the King of the Ring, how prestigious it really is. That's a plus. If yes. you build up a story for that, that's a plus with me. Yeah. I just, you know, my pick to win this whole thing, because I know we're going to get to it, but this person needs it way more than the rest of these 15 guys. My pick to win the semifinals is Andrade Cien Amis. So you set up Ricochet versus Andrade Cien Amis that we got a taste of on Monday Night Raw in that gauntlet match. And boy, was that killer. So with that being said, we are officially at the point of Clash of Champions. Before we get into our final matches and winners, let's go ahead and talk about a few of the other people. Shout out to everybody that participated. I'm sorry if I didn't say your bracket. I respect you all that tried and had fun. Chris Mays, he actually went with... Uh, Cedric Alexander versus Chad Gable in his finals. He went with Chad Gable being king of the ring. That's very interesting to me. Uh, let's see here. The Cleaver, Con Andrew, representing NX team. He actually went with Drew McIntyre versus Kevin Owens as his finals and went with King McIntyre as king of the ring. A very interesting pick. The Duchess, Cindy G. Her finals is Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. A reinvention of the 2016 classic trilogy. And she had Sami Zayn becoming King of the Ring, the first real accolade that Sami Zayn would have on the main roster. And then, of course, the guy that started this all in the no DQ official chat, Travis Fane, he had, well, this is going to be interesting, and I think I'll just let you kick that off, but I'll talk more about that in a moment. Anyway, Big G, shout out to you. You are definitely NX team. He had McIntyre versus Owens, and he has King McIntyre. And then, of course, my good friend TJS, Congrats on your A-plus certification, sir. He also had King McIntyre going over Kevin Owens as well. So it looks like the common denominator here has been Kevin Owens and Drew McIntyre for the most part, and a lot of people can see Drew McIntyre. Now, you and I can either see King Corbin or King Ali or King Ricochet or King Andrade. And I did watch Aaron Riz's video, and in his opinion, he did go with uh, – who did he go with? I already forgot. With a King uh, – he went with, uh, I believe um, – Andrade. So, again, I love to see that. But with that being said, let's go ahead and go into our finals because, ah, jeez, this is going to be uh, interesting because Travis Fain, he went the exact same finals as you. Ricochet versus Andrade Cianama. So, before I declare who his king is, talk to me about what you expect to see at Clash of Champions and who you think will be King of the Ring 2019. <sighs> Ricochet versus Andrade Cien Amis in the finals. Yes, they did have a one-on-one match in the gauntlet match to determine the number one contendership for the United States Championship, a.k.a. Right. The hot potato for now. Um, I've been hearing rumors for weeks that WWE is very high on Andrade Cien Amis. That also happened last year around this time. 
Correct. But what did but what did they do with Andrade from September through December of last year? Nothing. Nothing. Not in pay per views. Not even on the kickoff shows at all. The only thing that happened is Vince said, "Learn English and get back with me." And to his credit, he has learned better English. But thankfully, Selena Vega is still with him. And, and again, don't forget. Don't forget, he's dating Charlotte. Don't forget the queen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now I'm hearing that rumor again. Now, I don't jump the gun when it comes to like, oh, you're high on this person. You don't do nothing with them. But this time, I'm going to be like, okay, this better be serious. I feel like Andrade Cianamis needs to win the 2019 King of the Ring winner. You got a man. You have a wrestler. Who is a five-star machine? Why is this man not an Intercontinental Champion? And why is this man not WWE Champion? He he was the wrestler. I got to put Gargano in this, too. Gave WWE five stars for the first time in almost seven years. That is correct. Against Andrade Cianamas versus Giant Gargano for the NXT Championship. In My God, what a match. I believe it was in Philadelphia. Yes, I'm that correct. Is correct. That was the main event. Yes, 30-plus minutes, and it was worth it. If you have not seen that match, please check it out. Take 30 we'll minutes. Check out NXT. Where yes. are you living under a rock? Anyway, continue. I got Andrade winning this because he deserves this. It makes sense for him for the title. It makes sense. King Andrade, it is perfectly. Queen Zelina, it fits perfectly. I would love to see This it. man it's deserves fun. to be a champion, but I even told Sydney this. Andrade needs to be a champion by the end of the year. And each, I don't care if it's the Intercontinental or the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. You know, if Kofi retains it against Randy Orton, oh. you know, Andrade would look so lovely with that championship. Make him hold that title all the way to WrestleMania 36. Now, that's how you build a champion. I think Kofi Mania has passed. You know, I let personal feelings get to sign me. It cost me a point in the no DQ predictions league. I wanted Orton to win. Now they're just checking this out even further. I'm like, damn it. But I love that idea, and I feel like Andrade, you're right, can go the distance with this and can really use this. And Queen Selena Vega, oh, man, the getup, the, uh, the introduction, and just the prestige. It just and the Spanish, awesome. and the Spanish of the king, you know, anything. And the, the boss. Uh, also, Travis Fame agree with you. He also went with King Andrade Cianama. So you two right now have the same outcome for King of the Ring. All right. So, you know my finals is Baron Corbin versus Mustafa Ali. A person people can get behind versus a person people can't stand. But, who do I see doing more with this? The statistics show that King of the Ring has been won more over by a heel. And even at the worst case scenario, a heel has at least done something with it, if not used the scepter to their advantage to win matches. It is for that reason, and the fact that he already has uses accolades to build cheap crowd heat. And I could see him bragging about every week, getting a new theme, having a squire with him, reading off a scroll that I went with Baron Corbin becoming King of the Ring for 2019. I feel like he could deliver the most heat from it. He could probably go along his distance with it. He can brag about it till day's end. And I feel like his character is perfect to use that scepter to his advantage to win matches. And it could probably capital him to a mid-card title picture. Even if the title right now is being held by a heel. But right now we got Braun vs. AJ coming up. The bottom line is this. I see King Corbin going through 2019, ending with a championship of the year, and Queen Lacey Evans, who, by the way... Oh, my God, done, I was about to say it! <laughs> ...who has not done nothing with... Since Extreme Rules, I might add, and now Becky, the Raw Women's Champion, has nothing to do with her because the boss, Sasha Banks, is back. This allows both of them to have something. So you basically build two heels for the price of one that will annoy the hell out of fans, but please, Vince. That is why my pick to win King of the Ring 2019 is King Baron Corbin. But again, so I many pray. many dudes are going to be drinking that night if that happens. Oh, jeez, man. And I'm sticking by it, too, even in predictions of this match. If Baron Corbin's in the finals, regardless, my pick to win King of the Ring, King Baron Corbin. Simple as that. I, I can see your Twitter. I can really see your Twitter. Wow, I can't believe I was right. 
well, here's some Mountain Dew. Let me drink two before I go to bed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm going to do that exactly. Glasses off, Mountain Dew right to the side of it. I can't but believe I was right. <laughs> sometimes it's not worth being right, but it's for fun, so what the hell. Anyway, that concludes our King of the Ring Bracketology and Predictions. Again, I hope they make something happen with this. And do you agree? Do you disagree? Who do you decree will be King of the Ring? The only thing I will say, I want to bring this up. I know Sydney G will be upset. I, I When I looked at Sydney G's, because I thought I, I did say, wow, what a Canadian mark you can be. But, <laughs> she, but, 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 she did make sense about the history of the rivalry. And plus, Sami Zayn needs to be incredible. Because he's looking like he's looking like crap. And plus, when you have that that Kevin Owens promo saying, "I care about this King of the Ring," Shane McMahon can cost him that at the pay per view. Like Sydney G, I will say, she can be very pre- unpredictable, but predictable at the same time with her picks. I even said this to her yesterday and said, "You can pick something dumb." But sometimes it always comes out right, and it makes sense. So, Sydney G, you got to pass with me on that one. Well, she's following logic. She's also following past to be history we created because we all know WWE loves to retcon stories and characters. There's a reason a number of people in WWE have repeated their character, heel or face turn. And I Correct. expect more of that to come later this year. But with that, we are officially done here. So thank you, folks, for joining us for this first ever double featurette. And let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. What are you more excited for? King of the Ring or the Super J Cup 2019? What are your winners for both? Who are your dark horses? Agree, disagree? Who do you decree will be the winner of Super J Cup and King of the Ring? Let us know in the comments down below. Good luck to all near and far. And let's hope, at least from King of the Ring, whether win or lose, we at least build one potential new star. Simple as that. But with that being said... Goodbye, Chris. This was extremely fun. A pleasure, honor, and privilege to finally do a video game with you. Yes. You. Good now into our simple take on uh, the Super J Cup and King of the Ring. Once it's all said and done, but mostly Super J Cup because we got the day of wrestling come up on our state first. Is there anything you want to plug and where can people find you? Follow me on Facebook, Christopher Willis. Follow me on Instagram, Chris J. Willis 86. Follow me on Twitter, GB Chris Willis 86. Follow my Facebook group, AEW Nation. We just hit 13,000 members. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Holiday kept saying 12,000. I'm like, no, we're in the 13s now. So, you and Randy are definitely building a community. Bravo, to both of you. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, simple as that. Thank you. Simple plugs. Appreciate it. And I'm definitely a member of that. And again, we are both extremely excited for AEW All Out, New Japan for Wrestling World Quest. And more. But with that being said, if you want to know more about me, know this. I'm just a simple man and a lifelong fan of wrestling. So if you want to follow me and talk anything wrestling, WWE and beyond, New Japan for Wrestling, AEW, Impact Wrestling, Ring of Honor, Independent Wrestling, Sport Independent Wrestling, folks, and more, you can look me up on Twitter, nodq.com forward slash millet takes to my Twitter page, excuse me, or you can follow my simple YouTube channel here at youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Noah Foster 210, where you'll find all sorts of reviews, summaries, recaps, predictions, and takes on all things wrestling, W and beyond. And stay tuned for more content on this channel. At the heart of it every week is hashtag 205 Life Matters, a review and a forum on the 205 Life brand and Cruiserweight Wrestling and Junior Heavyweights, then, now, and forever. Join the fun also on hashtag 205 Life Matters Facebook group. I figure out like 22 or 23 members. Shout out to all of you that have joined me in that community and stance. And if you haven't figured it out by now, support No DQ. There's a reason I'm in YouTube, and it's a heck of a lot of fun. It's a great community. Go buy a shirt. I have a shirt. NoDQ.com forward slash shirts. Go make a friend. Go make an enemy. Your opinions matter. Go follow them on our social media platforms. And go to the official website. There's a comment section on everything. Polls, comms, memes, gifts, reviews. It's actually female text. You name it, it's there. It's wrestling, primarily WWE. But we're ushering in and invading with AEW. And it's a New Japan Pro Wrestling when one particular name is involved. Stay tuned also on this channel for predictions and takes on New Japan Pro Wrestling, Royal Quest, AEW All Out, and NXT UK Takeover Card. If August 31st marks the end of my summer of wrestling, it's going to be a day indeed. And who knows, I might even live react, stream, and score to one of those shows right here on YouTube. Stay tuned for that. I might surprise you. And as always, as I like to close, 
Support your wrestling outlets by being small, and let's keep growing this incredible, diverse, unique, one-of-a-kind wrestling community together. Simple as that. With that, thank you again so much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us in this double simple take on two incredible wrestling tournaments coming up. Like, share, subscribe, comment, tell a friend, hit that bell to know when the next video is. Let us know if you have any questions or any additional thoughts. And until our next video, whether here on NoDQ or somewhere else in YouTube, for Good Brother Chris, a leader in AEW Nation, and for me, the simple man. And also remember, he is dual champ of Team NDQ for our huge fan pro wrestling and AEW. We'll see if both of those hold up come August 31st. Until our next video, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Have a good night. And Sydney, you will never, never be a champion. Just draw yourself a championship, okay? You go to Steve Sip emoticon you on Twitter so hard. Oh. Sydney J, we'll see you soon. And good luck to all who's participating in both our Super J Cup predictions game and King of the Ring. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. Take it easy, people. Take it easy. What was that?